Hi, my name is Alicia Savar from Bridger Digital. In one of our previous videos, we talked about input capacitance and the fact that we need a whole bunch of ceramics and a whole bunch of electrolytics. In this video, we're going to talk about how we're going to calculate the exact amount of ceramic capacitors that we need and how to select them. So, um, as we mentioned in our previous video, you need a whole bunch of ceramic capacitors on the input of your power supply so that you can reduce the amount of uh, ripple and the high frequency noise. Uh, in order to work out exactly how much we need, let us consider the shape of the input current first. Uh, so if I go to the board, for simplicity, let us say that you've got a buck converter. The shape of the input current without any capacitance whatsoever would look probably something like this. Um, now, this would be my on period, T on. This would be my off period, T off. This is my switching frequency of 200 kilohertz. This is time. So if I have a switching frequency of 200 kilohertz, then from there to there will be around five microseconds. Now let us consider the input voltage. Uh, during the on period, the capacitors on my input are going to discharge because I'm delivering energy and therefore I'm going to get a dip. And then during the off period, sorry, that's the on period. During the off period, the, my DC bus, my bench power supply or whatever is going to charge my capacitors and therefore the voltage is going to go up. During the on period, it's going to go down again and so on. And therefore you end up with a ripple, which we're going to call delta V in peak to peak. My input ripple voltage peak to peak. I uh, need to calculate the amount of my capacitors so that I reduce this to a certain level. It's a little bit hard to do because we usually do not know the impedance of our bench power supply or DC bus or whatever it is that is feeding our um, the power supply that we're designing. Therefore, the worst case would be to assume that we have high impedance, we've got long cables, or our power supply is far away from the DC bus on the PCB. So under this condition, when we have got high impedance, uh, the equation for a buck converter would, would boil down to being something like this. So um, delta in uh, V in peak to peak, my peak to peak is approximately, this is very rough, approximately equal to I out, times my steady state duty divided by switching frequency and C in. Now this one, we usually, at least for low voltage drop to around 100 volts, limit to around 100 millivolts peak to peak or half a percent or one percent of the line voltage. I out, so you know this one, I out you know, uh, D, your steady state duty you know, switching frequency you know, 200 kilohertz for example, and therefore, you can calculate CN. Now, for simplicity, let's say that you work this out and CN ends up to be calculated to around 10 microfarad. Please remember that these are ceramic capacitors, and of course, there is DC bias loss on these when you add, 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 the, add the DC across it. We have made another video that describes that in detail. So if you put in a, a lot of voltage across this, um, you will not get 10 microfarads, you'll get a lot less. So the way around this is to make sure that the voltage rating of the capacitor that you buy is significantly higher. For example, if you're doing a 12 volt power supply, then buy a 50 volt ceramic capacitor. And also DC bias gets worse as the size of the capacitor gets smaller. So try to buy a 1210 or maybe even bigger package uh, so that DC bias loss is not too bad. Um, and, and that's it. For other topologies, there are other standard equations uh, which you can find on the internet, or um, all of these are listed in Sanjay Maliktala's book in the appendix, uh, and uh, I will put a link um, to, this, to this book in the description. Finally, what we have done is we have taken all the equations for the topologies that our power supply design software, Breacher WDS, um, calculates and we and therefore if you're designing using WDS it will calculate it automatically for you which I'm going to show you on the uh, computer in a minute.
So uh, here we are, I have got WDS running um, and uh, these are the topologies that uh, are supported by WDS. Let us select uh, flyback CCM, uh, we tried buck on the board uh, and uh, I will not go through the uh, values of the input and output and so on. Let us leave those as default uh, because these are all covered in different videos. What are we interested in in this uh, input capacitor tab? If I go to the input capacitor tab, you will see that WDS has already calculated the uh, amount of uh, ripple voltage that we're going to have based on 1% of the nominal input voltage and that is going to be around 120 millivolts if we assume that we have got a high impedance source which is our worst case scenario as I mentioned earlier. Let us say that we want 100 millivolts so if I reduce that to 85% uh, sorry 0.85% uh, then um, I've got around 100 millivolts, which is what I want, and the calculated value of the uh, ceramic capacitor is around 20 microfarad. However, please note that the voltage stress, the DC voltage across this capacitor is 14 volts. Um, and therefore, we're going to take into account the uh, DC bias uh, loss. Um, I would be inclined to buy, first of all, three times more than this, uh, so three times 20 microfarad uh, capacitors, and also in order to minimize the impact of the uh, DC bias loss, I would buy a bigger package, 1210, and also a much higher voltage rating on the capacitor, perhaps 50 volts. So there we go, uh, we have calculated the size of our ceramic capacitors, three times 20 microfarads, 50 volts, 1210 package. In the next video, we're going to talk about electrolytic capacitors. And once we do that and fill the electrolytic capacitor section, then WDS will calculate again everything for us and recalculate this amount of ripple voltage that uh, we're going to have. Uh, there is a uh, link down in the description for a very good presentation uh, which covers what we've talked about and much more which you can download for free. Uh, the evaluation version of WDS is also available for download uh, from the link in the description and of course uh, Mr. Manik Thaler's uh, book uh, where you will find the equations for the ripple for most other topologies. Uh, I hope Hope you have enjoyed the video and I hope to see you in one of our workshops.